Hello everyone, welcome to another video, it's Francesco here. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at the application for Mac called Things. Now Things has been out for quite a while now, and it's actually one of the most used task management applications out there. Now we're going to take a look at a few of the features and also share some thoughts when using the application. Now hopefully this will either give you an idea if you're looking to use Things as a task manager, or also give you some context if you're already using it. Things operates off a concept that many people know called GTD. And you have an inbox when you get started, which is a nice place to start collecting some items. Now you have an ability as well at the bottom to actually add either projects or new tasks, and you can add them straight into there, but there are keyboard shortcuts which will help you get to that faster. Now, when you're adding a task, there are a lot of different like context points that you can add. So when you start adding, you can add tags as well. Uh, tags are a way to indicate the context of a task. So they have some pre-created ones for you um, that relate to GTD systems. Now notes, you can add some notes, which is really handy. So if you just want to scribble down a checklist or whether they're some just general notes, um, it also has link detection. So if you want to include any links in there, it will pick that up. So you can add a really simple due date as well, selecting the actual day you're going to complete the task on or when it's going to be due. The thing you can do though is actually click repeat and you can actually choose a repeat task for this, which is quite nice. So going back to the inbox, the inbox is basically a place where you can collect everything. So today obviously encloses everything that you have either scheduled for today or you've actually put into the today project list. Now below that, you've also got next, which will give you a tally of all of the tasks that you've got coming up next. And it's sort of like a timeline of what's going on. Now they separate this based on project, which is quite nice. Uh, and obviously this is something that I currently use in Todoist as well, which I'll share in the description. Below that, you've also got schedules, so you can actually organize regular routines. Now these connect to your calendar, which is a good option as well. So you can actually have these scheduled um, tasks actually rolling out into your calendar too. Now Sunday is basically a concept from GTD, which indicates any future activities that you're going to have. So this is a great place to store those ideas, Things like holiday destinations, things like books you've wanted to read, or maybe shoes that you want to get, but isn't quite relevant at the moment. This is a great place to store those at, because it keeps it out of the way of like the today box and any other project items. So going down, you've also got projects as well. You'll be able to see a big overview of the projects and you can see all of their due dates and deadlines there, but it's a great way holistically to click that and see everything that's going on. Now below that, you've got active projects and areas. Active projects indicates all of the projects that you've got going on that are live. Uh, and also areas will showcase the overall big picture. So as you can see here, I've got YouTube and then I've got an active project inside of the active project sections. You can add active projects or just general projects into your areas as well. So you've got that sort of association. Now when you're editing the sections for active project and areas, you can't change the color code, which is quite strange, but you can add a tag uh, and also suspend the activity um, so that in case it's not active anymore. Below that, you've also got a logbook, which you can actually choose whether you, it's basically an archive to do's, uh, but you can actually choose whether you enter them at the end of the day or whether you enter them weekly, monthly, um, or quarterly. This is a great opportunity for you to review your activities for the day. Uh, what I recommend doing is actually have that immediately so that they come through there and you can see all of the things you've got done. So down at the bottom, you've also got trash. You can empty the trash very similar to the Mac uh, experience and it's very simple to use. You've also at the bottom got a search bar so you can actually search um, any of the activities that you've got inside of all across your things account. And you've also got tags as well. The one thing I really liked in this experience is the tags at the top of the list. So whenever you're in a list, you can actually flick between the tags from the top versus actually having to search for them separately. 
So this is a really nice way to see a view of only tasks that are relevant to certain tags. For example, 30 minutes or you know whatever it could be, the context around that task you completed. So you've also got quick entry, which I've actually selected to be control P, but whenever you click that control P, whatever tab you're on, you can actually quick enter a task here. It'll add all of the context points that I mentioned at the start of the video, and is a great way to quickly get something into things on the go. So when you're in the settings page, you've also got the ability to change the completed items to long. This is what I was mentioning before. You can have it immediately, you can have daily, weekly, monthly, and also manual. You've also got the ability to change the dot count, so you can actually choose whether you have do plus today or inbox as well, which is quite handy because when you're looking at that dock and you don't want to oversee um, the sort of notifications there. From here, you can also choose whether you're going to have things, items appear in spotlight. This works quite well, but I wouldn't use it a great deal. You can also group to do's and allow the today widget to launch uh, things whenever you need it. Now the Things Cloud is very easy to use. You sign up and create an account. And what it will do is once you have things for Mac and things for iPhone, you've then got a space for basically just storing things consistently. The sync will work really well. Now I found this very fluid and easy to use, so there was no problem there. Going into the settings, you've also got the ability to change the shortcut code for quick entry. Uh, which is very handy, so you can quickly choose where that quick entry uh, like how you access that quick entry, but also where it goes as well. Finally, you've got reminders to Siri as well. So whenever you say something into Siri, it connects to your reminders app natively on iPhone, which will then nudge any of your things into reminders uh, all the way over to things. Now, I think this is a cool integration and a very like native integration, but I don't think it's great deal. Like I, I wouldn't buy the app just for this. So as I mentioned before, Things is a really simple experience. Now what I've gathered from actually playing around with Things and actually spending some time inputting tasks is it's very well structured. I really like the way they use their icons. I really like the ability to actually go into projects and also see the focus as well. I really like the way that you can use schedule as well to like plan and coordinate tasks that are recurring. I really just like the same structure, it's really nice. Now Things is developed by a company called Cultured Code and it obviously it's got a fantastic reputation from all of the comments that I've seen on social media and some of the other stuff. So in terms of pricing, you're looking at four different uh, applications. You've got the Mac version, you've got iOS, which will include iPhone and also iPad, and you've also got Apple Watch. Now the Apple Watch version will come free with the iPhone purchase, which is quite handy. But in terms of pricing, the iPhone version is $20, the iPad version is $20, and the Mac version is $49.99. The benefit of using a system like this is you're not paying the recurring fee at the end of the year, but you do have to splash out around about $70 on a to-do list app. That's if you're looking to get it on two devices, that's an iPhone and a Mac. Now this is an investment, but it's something that I see quite beneficial, especially if you've done your research and had a deep look at the application. Now what I recommend is definitely try the free trial. Things Cloud is also free, so you don't actually have to pay for that as you go, and the storage and sync is quite strong when you're using the application. Now I recommend giving it a try, try the Mac version on trial and try the iPhone version as well when you get a moment. But the experience is really impressive. I found it very fluid, easy to use. No matter whether you're a GTD user or not, you'll be able to pick this up. And if you are a GTD user, this is a fantastic option. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on things and I'll be definitely sharing the iPhone version of this review very, very soon. Anyway guys, make sure you have a great week, keep productive and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.